You know, and we all have our 15 minutes of fame, and I'd like to take a couple of my 15 minutes to talk about the rights and the wrongs in the world of professional wrestling. And it is for the WWE Championship. This match is for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Championship. All right, you're listening to the WPN's Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling with your host, Mr. Green. And um, just in this uh, quick podcast, I, well, you know, let me rewind that for a second and set things up. I was talking with some friends of mine about pro wrestling, as we uh, tend to do. And one of the things that came up within the course of this conversation amongst uh, the Ring of Honors and Impacts and WWE and and things like that, which are the norm of uh, any conversation that I'm having amongst a, a group of people. Uh, somewhere wild got kind of slipped into that conversation, and uh, I was it was brought to my attention about the um, the post for the podcast that we had earlier on our channel, the WPN, uh, about the return of Wow, the Wow superheroes, and. Is rebranding, is is revamping, and so on and so forth. And within that, the question was basically, what happened? So, <laughs> I, I, I decided I say, okay, let me go ahead and uh, try to address that the best I can on this channel. Since it was brought up on this channel to begin with, I'm going to uh, try to reasonably explain the situation as best I know it. All right, so if you listen to the previous version of that, it, the, uh, the story of that in a nutshell was is that WOW superheroes, women of wrestling, which is what the WOW acronym is for those that did not know, they were and are looking to reboot slash revamp the program in that time between shooting the season two and present day they have been uh more or less the show has has sat on a hard drive or on a shelf and they've been shopping it to try to find a proper venue for that in that podcast it was revealed at the time that the plan was to show the new season roughly around WrestleMania season. And WrestleMania season for wrestling fans is the end of March and the beginning of April. Now, that being said, we are in or pushing into July. So, we are more uh, close to SummerSlam than we are uh, coming out of WrestleMania. Therefore, the question in this particular uh, group conversation, what happened, came up. So, the quite honestly, I... I don't know the exact meaning or status as to why that did not come across. Uh, the, I, I yes, I do uh, converse with Wow, but is this is not like we have lengthy conversations with each other. This is more or less when uh, news is coming up. I, I shoot it over to them. I ask a question. We you know find out what's going on. They they usually give it back. And, uh, you know, they've been very formal that way, and I do appreciate the WOW organization for being uh, as open and honest with, with uh, the WPN as they could possibly be. Uh, and we certainly wish to continue that, that relationship. <clears throat> um, 
But I hadn't asked, okay, what, what's the deal? What's going on? Why haven't y'all gone up yet? Up until uh, about a week ago. And then um, it was more or less a, a case of that they've begun redoing a, a promotional material. <laughs> let, let's, let's call it that. I, I don't want to give uh, too much of what what was in that particular email away. So I'm trying to say it as, as, as best I can. But uh, they've been trying to do promotional material. And, and I know I can mention this, that uh, Keita Rush, Erica Porter, uh, uh, Lana Kinnear, who y'all know as Lana Starr, Jungle Girl, and, uh, and, and others, uh, they have shown back up to do photo shoots and, and things like that nature. So they, they have continued to move forward. I, I think the, the big slight here, and this is just me kind of piecing things together, Based on again the emails and uh, other things that have popped up in the forums and and uh, so on and so forth, uh, the the original plan there when uh, moving to the digital side of things, opposed to the terrestrial television network, is was to kind of bump things up a bit and and give the fans something to to view to keep the interest in the uh, wild brand alive. Thus, they produce the Wild Flashback episodes. The Wild Flashback episodes, which you can find on the Wild Superheroes on their YouTube channel. They do put clips of it up on the uh, Wild Facebook page. But nevertheless, uh, those episodes do exist under the Wild Superheroes brand on, you know, on any popular format that you can find. Within that, I, I think the idea was to grow cultivate and kind of leverage an audience up against uh, what to do with the the newer episodes one way or the other and the Twitter followers that they have been phenomenal uh, it's been uh, been good numbers I think they have uh, reasonable numbers on their their Facebook page as Facebook followers they have good numbers on their YouTube channel for for uh, subscribers. Uh, the actual views on the channel are questionable. And I think that may have created cause to look things over again. This is, just, this is my opinion. The episodes that they have are still, and I, I think I had this conversation with Erica Porter when, when the, the interview I had with her, the episodes that they have are actually out competing with episodes of Wow. Wow has been around for a long time, you know. It, even though they've repackaged the the flashback episodes, they are still Wow episodes. And there have been a number of people that have existed on YouTube that have just flat out uploaded full episodes of of that series, not clips, not part one of a match and then come back the next day and you get part two. They, they've uploaded the entire match. So you can either wait on the uh, official Wild Superiors channel and look at that, or you can go and you can just seek it out. You can find the, the entire episode from start to finish right there online. And I do believe that hurts to some degree. Uh, and, to the wild management, please understand, you know, that I, I hope that whatever is being said at this point is taken with the constructive criticism and that, uh, that is utilized. I, I hope that uh, my opinions have been uh, respected enough amongst that the wild brand and wild organization that uh, some of this might be taken into account. So having said that, I personally believe that while as the YouTube channel, we're speaking strictly about the YouTube channel right now, I would take the, that channel and upload and cut the full match. No more part ones and twos and threes and fours. Just cut the full match. It, it's kind of, you know, it, it creates a little bit of discord in the viewing experience to have to try and follow that 
look at a clip, wait a day or two, and then you know if it's uploaded on Wednesday, and then I have now I have to wait till Friday to see the rest of it. You want to see the entire match? Wrestling fans just like to get that that fix, and they like to get it in quick. You don't you don't want to get half of it and then have to wait a day or two, forty eight hours, to get the second half. So my so that is the first thing I would say. The second is that the wild superheroes, the uh, participants of that brand, are very loyal to wild superheroes. To the ones that I spoke to, Lana Kinnear, Hudson Envy, who, you know, she may be busy right now, but she spoke very highly of the brand. Uh, Barbie Hayden, who was there as Abilene Maverick, also spoke very highly of the, of the brand. Uh, Erica Porter definitely spoke very highly of the brand. Keita Rush spoke very highly of the brand. I haven't, I haven't interviewed or spoke to any one person that had something negative to say about WOW as an organization, and that is phenomenal. I think that that YouTube channel is a perfect venue to get those ladies in front of a camera and, and have them talk it up. A lot of the people that are subscribing to that channel are looking for new content, not not the old content. I don't I don't believe that the interest for the matches that took place over a decade ago is quite where it used, you know needs to be, particularly when it's chopped up. So I the idea would be is you know produce as much new original content for budget as you possibly can. Now, I know that that part is the kicker because a lot of that taping goes on in in uh, Vegas. We have talent scattered all over the place, so that, that kind of creates a, a bit of a an issue in and of itself. I Believe me, I was totally surprised to find out that Eric Porter even stayed on the East Coast much, you know, when I was trying to uh, get the interview with her. It, it, it shocked me, shocked the hell out of me. But uh, either way, there's enough technology in the world. I've done it, <laughs> you know, and I and I have a skeleton crew here with the uh, WPN. We we've managed to make these things take place, and I and I know why I could do the same thing. I certainly know, and I definitely believe that why I could do the same thing if they really uh, stuck to it and, and pushed for trying to do that. <clears throat> Also, one of the things that came up that I wanted to address was uh, somebody in in a uh, a forum uh, at the Cult of Kayfabe on uh, Facebook. Quick shout out to them. Uh, at one point, said, "Wow, well, should just put all this stuff up on YouTube. It would be better if they just stuck all the the episodes, the the new episodes on YouTube, and they can get a little bit of money off of that." I completely disagree, and I could not convince him differently. He just did not understand. So I'm going to take to my platform and say why I disagree. I disagree with that that statement because without knowing how much money went into actual production cost, without knowing how much money went into paying the talent, without knowing how much money went into travel expenses, lodging, catering, you know, post production. Without knowing the the amount of money that was spent on the production of the 13 episodes that exist for a while right now, there's no way to calculate what you're going to get off YouTube. YouTube is is a kind of a tricky entity in and of itself. One, in that just for the money to generate, you got to sit through the ad. And I don't think that WOW as a brand or, or the parent company to WOW wants to risk or take the, uh, the chance on people not sitting through the ads so they can get the ad revenue for their product. And then, you know, you, you, you have to take into account that in this day and age, particularly in a digital platform, there's a shelf life. There's a shelf life to it, you know, how much money you're going to earn off of that because as sure as that thing goes up online, somebody's going to try to rip it off and, and repost it, something like that. I, our entire channel was taken. So if it would happen to the WPN, it certainly would happen to WOW. And, and yes, you could fight back. I mean, there, there are channels to go through and YouTube can get it kicked off. Thank goodness for that. Uh, we were able to save it save our material 
But I don't think that uh, David McLean, the other investors, uh, the management that's in the wild would want to try to deal with that. The iffiness of it is just just too much. You, you want something where you can be solid about the money that you're going to get. So that brings up VOD. <clears throat> Why not push WoW to a VOD platform where people could just flat out pay for the episodes? Uh, that That's a novel idea. That the idea that you can upload them to YouTube and the one episode at a time for X amount of dollars, you could pay and, and get it seen. However, I think that the concern there would be is that how many people would be actually willing to sit down and pay episode by episode for uh, the wild product. I think there would be a sufficient amount of, you know, significant amount of people that would try and pay for it, but Again, it comes back to would it be enough to compensate for the money that has already been spent for the WoW brand thus far? And uh, that is where it gets very, very tricky. It's hard to say that, well, we, we have X amount of people that's following us on Twitter. We got X amount of people that's following us on Facebook. We got X amount of people that subscribed to us on YouTube. Therefore, we should be able to earn so-and-so amount of dollars. But, you know, I think, the again, the viewership, if you were basing it strictly on the viewership of the, the videos of the Wild Superheroes, it makes it hard to say, okay, if we put this up, they'll pay for this. It's, when, they're, when they're not going to it in droves and it's for free, you know, you, how do you get someone to pay two ninety nine, three ninety nine, four ninety nine, 399 whatever the, the amount of money is by the episode in order to, uh, recoup the loss. So, VOD is a, is an interesting concept. is It's a, it's a uh, interesting platform. I probably would pay the money to uh, watch those episodes because I, like a lot of people, uh, have uh, been waiting to watch those episodes. But the, the, I I don't represent the masses, so <clears throat> I think that is the uh, the real big thing there. Some people have said that you know they should try to shoot for Netflix or Hulu or something along those lines. I personally think that Netflix would be an absolutely perfect fit for a while. I don't know if they've had any contact with Netflix as of yet, but the, since the show is shot as a television property instead of a wrestling promotion, I, I don't see why WoW could not exist on that. And let me explain what I mean by it's shot as a television show and not a wrestling promotion because I'm sure some people are like, hey, it's a wrestling promotion. Well, not really. I like WoW, and WoW is centered on and built around pro wrestling. That is very much true. But it is not a wrestling promotion. It, 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 it's no more wrestling promotion than Lucha Underground is. Lucha Underground does not tour. They don't do house shows. They don't uh, sell merchandise. They don't. They don't do overseas. You know, they, they, the only thing that Lucha Underground basically does is they produce a program that is built around wrestling, and that program is run on a network, and I think it's sold on other platforms. And that's that's essentially what Wow does as well. They they don't take that product and tour they don't uh do house shows they don't go overseas with the with those ladies and uh have a, a international brand tour they don't uh sell merchandise with t-shirts and and uh you know things that, with uh cage teed or alana star or abilene maverick they don't uh, they don't have action figures that they don't do any of the things that a, a a strong wrestling promotion at this point are looking to do. They don't sell DVDs, you know. They they they're not doing uh promotional and documentary videos on their on their characters and 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 things like that. You know, th those are things that you do when you you try to increase the revenue flow for your wrestling promotion. And I'm not saying that those things wouldn't work for a while. I, I hope that they get to it at some point. I hope they do sell some T-shirts or you know maybe some DVDs and things like that. But the problem is, is that when you don't do pay-per-views and uh, or I pay-per-views and you don't do house shows and and uh, other venues and platforms, where do you get the material to produce? 
DVDs? Where do you get the material to produce video on demand? Where do you get the material to make compilations and things like that? If you haven't learned anything from the WWE at this point, the one thing that they that they have and always have is that they they're constantly on the road. They constantly have matches. They they're in one town after the other, after the other, after the other. And normally there are cameras available just in case. And because of that, they they have tons of material. They have tons of material. They, they got a, 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 a special on July the 4th from Japan, and that's just a house show. There's nothing special about it. It's the only thing that makes it special is that they got an NXT championship being defended on it. But beyond that, it's just a house show. It's a house show that happens to be taking place overseas. WOW doesn't do any of that. So it, it is a television show that is built on the premise of wrestling. It is not a wrestling promotion that happens to have TV. So now, that being the case, uh, it, gets, it gets tricky and it gets hard to say that, you know, VOD will work just because they don't, they don't have the uh, that type of uh, flow of content behind them. Uh, but it, it would be interesting if they could uh, make that work. Uh all things being equal and, and uh, all things considering what WOW is and how they're going and, and what they're going to do, I think, again, and this is based on a personal email, they do not want to take a misstep in pushing the revamp of WOW, especially from this point on. They do not want to betray their audience. They do not want to uh, make the audience feel like they're not getting what they deserve out of it. They, they want this to come off and come off well. They want it to, uh, to launch, and they don't want anything to set them back once they launch. So it is a case of they're trying to do this the best way that they can under the circumstances that they are with what they can do it with. And that's probably the, the best way that I can say it. Did they have a misstep in terms of did you know not releasing around WrestleMania season? Yeah, they they did and I think they in their in their heart of hearts wanted to get it out there as as soon as they could, but that just didn't happen. So they have to take the, the hand that's dealt with them. And in, in this case the hand that's dealt to them is we need to strategically put this out uh, when we're able to put it out. And I think that maybe three months from now or within the three-month window, they hopefully should be able to get it out. The only thing that I'm concerned with, with WOW at this point is the longer it takes in, to get that out or at least get new content around WOW produced, the longer that that takes, I think that they may begin to lose some fans, and I hope that that doesn't happen. So there you have it. Uh, that is the the standing of WOW Women of Wrestling as I know it. If I get any further information, I will be sure to bring it up on this channel. And speaking of this channel and support, please continue to support the WPN, the Women's Pro Wrestling Network. We uh, do a lot over here, I mean, we do a lot, a lot of, lot of videos being cut, trying to find these people, getting con content, podcasts, and things of that nature. We got hours of matches right here on this YouTube channel. If you are indeed listening on this YouTube channel, there, there are hours and hours of content here for you to, to check out. <coughs> uh, original matches, the Black Widow versus Jessica Whitmore, Dementia the Rose versus Pandora in an in excellent I Quit match, Devin Nicole taking on Dementia the Rose. Uh, we got Rock and Roll Roxy making a singles match against a Calm Like a, bo calm like a Bomb Pandora. Aja Super Pereira is in action, the debut of Kiera Hogan, a young lady who act did a, uh, a tryout for WWE not too long ago, so you definitely want to get a hold of watching her stuff before she blows up somewhere. Uh, there's, of course, other podcast episodes that you can listen to, the uh, Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon, WrestleMania 32. Uh, 
episode uh, talking about what Jim Ross was bringing up. We got interviews. You can check out uh, former WWE diva and TNA knockout Shelly Martinez, her her interview with me uh, from our archives. Uh, new, newcomer Celine Gray. We got her interview on here. And uh, the Destination America debacle that took place. I spoke about that a little bit. And that's talking about Impact Wrestling and ROH Wrestling. So there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff on here. And and your support does not go unnoticed. I really appreciate every bit of that. The uh, You driving the numbers up for our matches. The driving the numbers up for our podcasts. Uh, driving the numbers up for our, our subscriber base and viewerships. Uh, the followers on our, our Facebook page. And... Uh, we're still working on Twitter, <laughs> but but just the fact that you guys have taken to everything else that we've uh, kind of put out there, we, uh, I definitely want to thank you and uh, ask for your continued support. Uh, there, there are a number of ways that you can do it. Go to WPNWrestling.com, which is our new website. That's WPNWrestling.com. Dot com and you can uh, check out some of some of our other stuff, our additional content, blogs and video logs and uh, all that good stuff. So that's that. Now, when the uh, when the time comes and we have more information as far as uh, what Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, I know they <laughs> they've had their own issues, but uh, as far as what Wow is uh, dealing with, we'll be sure to bring that up again. If you have questions if you have comments feel free to leave them on our youtube channel under whichever video that you are commenting about if you have a direct message you can go to our facebook page women for us network and you can message me directly there i do read them if i am not there to see it at the time because it gets forwarded to me so just uh know that whatever you're putting up it is red. Okay, folks. Thanks a lot for uh, everything. Thank you for your support, and we will check you out later. Take care, guys. Thank you for listening to the WPN's Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling. If you have questions or comments, please contact us via our Facebook or our YouTube channel at the Women's Pro Wrestling Network. If you're new to the WPN, feel free to subscribe to our channel and like our page. We appreciate your support. Thank you again for listening.